Hello doll friends, this is Michael Canadas with the Carmel Doll Shop and the Grovian Doll Museum. Welcome to Beyond All Limits. Um, like many people in the great state of California, we are right now living in seclusion. So it's just me and David Robinson, who is the first time he's ever been behind the camera filming one of these programs. So say hello to everybody, David. Hello everyone. So, please, I've had my caffeine today, so please forgive the jitteriness if there is any. Thank we're going to do the best we can yeah. under the circumstances. Um, getting this program together for all of you, I was thinking about the history of dolls and how they relate to our times. So I have a potato here in my hand, and this has a lot of historical significance to dolls. French dolls, particularly the, the firm, the Jumeau firm. Right now we're having all kinds of shortages of cleaning supplies and very strange things. But during the Franco-Prussian War, Emile Jumeau gave his wife an amazing Christmas gift. In the middle of the starvation and the hunger times, he, instead of giving her a diamond bracelet, he gave her a potato because the potato was something that they, they could use to, to survive. So think of the big firm of Jumeau at the, the height of their power, that a potato was so important to the survival. And it helps me realize that our problems are not so great. So I'm gonna start the program since I started with Emile Jumeau. We're going to start with this part of our collection, which is known to collectors as a World Exposition Jumeau. And this is a quite, this is a large doll. It's probably, what, 30, don't you think 32 inches? Mm, I think so. Yeah, about 32 inches. Um, I have a theory about these dolls. I feel that they were strictly for uh, exhibition purposes only. They weren't in the toy line to be bought and sold um, um, as toys. There are smaller versions of these, although they're quite rare, that are uh, toys. This one is in an, wearing an antique costume, but it is not her original costume in my um, estimation. Most of these dolls that I know of, that we know from historical photographs, etc., were dressed as, such as this group, as noble women and the queens of France. Now, this, this is an um, original of the time uh, from an ex exhibit, I believe, in uh, 1898 or so. That makes this very interesting, is that these dolls were used in three different periods by the Jumeau Company for exhibition pieces. And of all of these ladies, the only one that I know of that survives is Eleanor of Austria in her original clothes. And I think the reason that they don't survive with these clothes is early collectors didn't understand costume dolls. So they took them off and put them in other things. Um, now that being said, this is the only one that I know of that has survived, but some of these other pieces very well could be uh, out there and around. Um, it's a very unusual face. Um, again, it's got the original uh, antique clothes, but I know that they're not original to her because many, many years ago, our club put on a, a doll show and this doll showed up at the uh, event and she wasn't wearing this dress, but I never forget a face. And uh, one of the reasons we have this doll is because rarely does David Robinson say, I want that doll. And you wanted this doll, didn't you? I still do. <laughs> and what's really mm. interesting is for David, this is, this is really not a size of a doll that he, he would pick. But again, it's the face comes in this great size. And you can see it's a pressed bisque beautifully painted, uh, very, very heavy limbs. It's heavy doll, but look at the tiny little waist. 
So we went to, you know, this is um, the Emile Jumeau and Pierre Jumeau era. Uh, now we're going to go kind of back in time a little bit. Um, this is another one of our treasures in our collection. And this is a um, Marie Emmanuel Cruchet. And I believe that there's, this is a portrait of Princess Mathilde Bonaparte. If you know that she has a slightly mannish face, Mathilde Bonaparte looked as a young woman exactly like her uncle, Napoleon Bonaparte. Very, very noble face. Um, it's got a very unusual body. It's almost like it's in a, in a jumpsuit with very unusual um, um, articulation. But what makes this doll unique is, the, is the, the head sculpture, the painting. Look at the detail in the eyes. They really look like they're glass eyes, but they're painted. Just fantastic. And this doll has, um, she's really, really lucky. If you notice her tiara on her head, those are real diamonds, real pearl, pearls, real gold. It's the real stuff. And then she's also got a real diamond and pearl brooch. You know, her, her arms are generic. They're not anything special, but everything that's special is in that face. And that's one we wanted for a long time. Don't you agree, David? Yes, we actually had one years ago that we did place in a collection, but yep. this one, well, we, were, we did not let this one go. No, this one came, came along and it just worked out great. Um, so here's Mathilde Bonaparte. So the next logical thing is we should look at her um, cousin, the Empress of France. And this is another one of our treasures in our collection. It's actually one of my favorite dolls and I think that this is the best portrait of the Empress of the French that there is. Um, early collectors called these cabelcas because it's similar to a patent that a, um, a man by the name of Cabelka um, patented, but it was for wooden, wooden doll heads. It wasn't for bisque dolls. Um, this is a Le Verde, and it it's, has a, you can see all this hair. Underneath this, this is all set in a wax cap. So they would be individually um, inserted hair. And you can see how it's cut along the, the hairline. It's just beautifully done. Again, this is a doll that usually you see them large. They did make a few that were small. But I, I believe that this company is a victim of the Franco-Prussian War. So in all world pandemics, world um, tragedies, wars, etc., there are gonna be some companies and some people that don't make it. And I think that this company was one that did not make it through the uh, 1872 Franco-Prussian War. Uh, they only made dolls, uh, two, two known models that we know of. That doesn't mean that they didn't make dolls that were, again, generic, not anything particularly special that makes it hard for to identify. Another doll that is one of our treasures that David found for us. So, you know, I'm not always the super duper shopper, but David found this piece for us. And this is our, I just forgot the name of it. Rochard. <laughs> it's our Rochard. Antoine Rochard. Um, Antoine Rochard. See, that's why you're here today. And what's mm -hmm. really nice is that she has um, a Simone label. So it was uh, retailed by the Simone company. And she has a, a nice little wooden body. But you can see in this, this jewel that's um, embedded in her shoulder plate, if you were able to see what you can't with the, the camera, but there's uh, the image of either Jesus or Moses holding the hand of a child. And her dress is really nice that it can let us have access to, if you looked, you can see 
They are always marked inside the shoulder plate. And evidently, you can see the, the Antoine Rochard Breveté. And then the number, is that a 12, do you think? I where? Is that a 12? Mm, oh. I don't know. I'm sorry. It may be upside down. That makes it a little hard to see. But you can see that they had to let light in. And actually, there you can see if you can get in close, David, you could almost see yeah, but you're the image. Oh, that okay. Side and I'm over okay. Here. Let's have an argument right on mm -hmm. camera so everyone can see how it really is around here. But there, this is a very special little doll. And here's, here's, here's what's interesting is most of these are large. And this is the smallest uh, version of, of this that I know of. And of course, we love original uh, advertisements. So if you went to the Simone Company, this would be a little giveaway. So this has a little, looks like a little doll on a, a, a goat or a donkey. Uh, looks like a goat on a goat. But there's, there's the shop. And this is on Rue Reveille, which is very, very close to the Louvre. Um, when we were in Paris in November, I think, David, you actually took a photograph of their, I did, their of gate. I did, their gates, their and gate. asked a trivial pursuit question. That's right, people, that's right. Several people got it correct. Heading this way, so we're not in any particular chronological or order, this is one of our favorites. Um, this is a Doliac. Uh, Louis Doliac, um, a doll that was really made for a very short period of time, um, the early 1880s. There are actually not a lot of them, and they have this very, um, to me, a very square head. And as far as I know, this is the only facial model that they used. Um, a very, to me, a very pleasing face. Um, cobalt eyes, beautifully painted. Um, these came on leather bodies and they also came on wooden bodies. This one happens to be on a leather body, but look at this dress, which is just sensational. This we've made a pattern of it and we have it somewhere in our, um, in our box that's just patterns are thrown in it. And someday we'll make this available to the public. Um, it's a lot more work than you would think. And it's a princess line dress, that which means that it's one piece. It's not um, a bodice and a skirt. So that's all one piece. Does not mean the same thing as a princess line dress of the, the 1970s. And in costuming for for um, dolls and also people, a princess line dress is fairly rare because it's all together, so it, it, it gravity just destroys them. But this one's managed to stay in pretty nice con condition. And then she has some kind of lovely old uh, paste jewelry from the, the 18th century, um, just nice little pieces. I'm letting David in here. I wish you could see all of us. <laughs> you have to work on your, what is it called today? We call it um, social distancing. Oh, that's, forget <laughs> that. That's not happening. Um, now we're going to just, we're just taking it how they're on the table. This is a very unusual, and I wouldn't believe it if I didn't, um, examine it and pull it apart and do all that. But this is actually a brew. It just has a little bit of a different face. It's a round face brew of the period where they're starting to make the um, um, smiling brews. So it's got a little bit of the round faced um, paint technique to it, but it also has some of the uh, uh, smiling brews. And it's just amazing face with uh, the original hair and the original set, original brute. I could see how this could be confused with a uh, barwa. It could be. But mm -hmm. we know it's not a barwa we for know one it's not. reason. And the, do you want me to tell them the sure, reason? Sure, that's why I Okay, well, out. a lot of people get confused with 
Bruce and Barrois and et cetera, et cetera. The thing about um, Bruce is they're always, the system to organize it is always the alphabet. And A, such as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the sizing. So this has uh, the shoulder plate and the head have the sizing on it. And then it has a patented uh, brew body. Meaning a letter. A letter. It has a letter impressed on its that's head. That's right. It's got a letter impressed on its head. Not a So that's, a letter impressed on its head could also mean, um, you know, FG or EB. But when you see it just a single letter, it's sizing. And this chain necklace is something that you see on their fancy dressed dolls. These earrings you also see on their fancy dress dolls. And there are many line drawings of this particular hairstyle, which was actually a favorite hairstyle of the Empress of the French. She did these side curls like this. So this is one of our favorite pieces. And by the way, there's no secret place to get dolls. Um, David and I bought this at a, um, a big convention on the last day. So this gorgeous doll that so many people would like to buy off of us was just sitting there for days and no one, no one took her. So um, next, I guess, would be, because where she is on the table, is our, um, and I just forgot the name of it again. You have a block, <laughs> Antoine Rochard. Antoine Rochard. So our Antoine Rochard. So this would be the, the normal size that you would see as opposed to the, the little wee one. And none of these are exactly alike. Each doll is an individual because when they punch these holes out and then put these um, stanhopes, they're called stanhopes, and you'll find those in um, opera cases, um, walking sticks, um, uh, souvenir opera glasses. Yes, yeah, souvenir yeah. opera glasses. You'll find stanhopes in hundreds and hundreds, cigarette cases. It was just a little novelty because photography was, a, you know, a, a, a 19th century amazement. So they used it. But here you've got all this beautiful painting of gold chain work, and they've done it in gold, which has to be fired at a, at a low temperature. And then they've done this beautiful shading in, um, uh, what color would you call that, Damon? Oak. Ochre, like an ochre color. And she is missing a few of the Stanhopes. Yeah, but. and and I have no. We were offered to have them replaced by uh, someone, and I, both David and I, rejected that because a she'd have to go out of house to have that done, and b, you know what, I've never seen one with this many uh, jewels. They're called that they weren't missing some. Mm. It's a long time from 1870 to now for them to not be missing some. Now, if you ever are lucky to get, get any of these and you never know when they're gonna show up, don't get your Windex out and spray it and clean it because um, someone did that once and they removed all of their photographic images by doing that. Mm. So you have to be very, very careful handling them. Um, now, bouncing back around, I was showing you, here's a, that's a really good example. Look at that, the china paint. You see the color of the eyebrows? It's really almost mm -hmm. identical. Mm -hmm. So then this is, this is a, we have quite a few smiling brews. This is my new favorite. It's the latest one we have. It's got original, original clothes, um, but it's a tiny little size. So we go from the biggest to the smallest. Um, and she's a little bit later in the, the, you know, later 70s, almost coming into, you can see the hands, almost coming into the bebés, which you'd see on the circle dot and the brevetés. But a beautiful little um, um, face, and I would imagine, I'm not, not gonna pull her apart, but I imagine she's an A for the smallest. Wouldn't you think she's an A? I don't recall. Yeah. But, you know, again, it's not that important to me 
to find that out because you really have to mess up, mess up their hair and whatnot. And this is, is a costume that we have seen on other um, original brew dolls. And it's a little like a waffled silk. And then it's got another um, cotton backed silk uh, uh, piping trim. I don't, I don't know if I call that piping. It's um, oh, bound up. Binding. Oh, binding, yeah, thank you. But I love the way the back is um, pleated. Mm. with a, And that is piping there. And I'm sure that this was a much brighter color when she was new. And this is a newer piece to our collection because you can see most of these ladies here are in evening wear. And we have a lot of dolls in evening wear and, and, and quite a few in sporty. So here we have a, a polonaise suit. And I would say it's a very unusual face. And we think it's probably Barwa, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think we think it's Barwa. And she's in a promenade suit. And you can see that the original color was a beautiful blue. And this is silk velvet. So this was actually a super expensive dress at the time. The dress probably cost as much as the doll itself. Um, because the silk velvet was the most expensive fabric then. And then I think in the 1980s, David and I bought some silk velvet to do a um, sofa. And we paid, I think, $500 a yard mm -hmm. for it, which was a lot of money for us. Um, but it's a wonderful doll, a totally original. And you can see how it's beautifully done. Um, I want to point that out, that that's machine sewing. So they've done top sewing here. The machine was fully in use, all machine sewn. But, you know, it's still a lot of work to do that. But a beautiful f head, um, never had the clothes removed. And those of you who remember um, Lynn Murray, she's a past president of the UFTC. This was in her collection. You know, we... We move on, but the dolls should remain. And then the last one I'm going to share with you is a, a Dehors doll. And it's one of, isn't, aren't they our favorites? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think they're our They're favorites. like an addiction. Yeah, they are like an addiction. The good news is there aren't that many, so we don't have to have to be that addicted. But this is one of our favorite uh, pieces and she's I think our only brown-eyed uh, mm. Dehors that we have um, Right now, there's this a lot of talk about the Dehors head mechanism and um, Every other doll has the Dehors uh, neck mechanism um, None of our dolls have the Dehors neck mechanism. They all have various different kinds of mechanisms uh, this one has a, a, a basically like a cup and saucer neck. So there's no, you can see it's cut off and it sits on the um, shoulder plate like a cup and saucer. So this is probably a very early piece. Um, you can see lots of different body styles, uh, but these are the famous um, hand and arm movement that that collectors really crave in a Dehors doll. Um, and that jewelry is just incredible. Yes. Hers is not real jewelry, but it's, it's just as precious as dim diamonds and pearls. Original wig, original costume. Um, the dolls were one of the, the main um, distribu distribution points for the Dehors dolls was Maison Guillard, which was the the purveyors to the imperial prince. And if you're lucky enough to ever see a uh, books and things of um, what they were selling, um, you'll see these dolls with these huge dresses. So this is like 1868, um, you know, towards the end of the Second Empire. Although historically, the concept of the Second Empire really went on until 19. 
Well, this is just a, a little, I hope this brightens your day and uh, you've enjoyed this little tour of just a few of our girls. Uh, it was nice to get them out and move them around. Uh, I hope you all are safe and be safe and just sit at home and watch your computer and do your uh, prop projects and that way we can all be safe. Bye bye to all friends. Thank you.